Hi, good morning. I'm Jerry Hawking, a key account manager at caterer.com. Uh, this morning, I'm delighted to be catching up with Sarah Powell, the Director of Human Resources at Belmond Le Manoir au Cassesson, to discuss how they've been dealing with the challenges since the enforced closure uh, due to COVID-19 and how they are preparing for the future. Uh, good morning, Sarah. How are you? Morning. I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Good, good. Um, so, so for those that, that don't know you, uh, tell us a little about yourself and the beautiful property that you work. Yes, yeah, so as you say, I work at Belmont Le Manoir Cat Saison. Um, so we're based just down in the south of Oxfordshire. It is um, the two Michelin star restaurant. A uh, very, very small property, but a very special, unique property. Um, with I think the most famous thing is obviously our gardens. We've got a lot of different areas, a lot of different, um, and especially this time of year, it looks amazing. So it's very such a shame that we're closed that that's what people want to see and want to have visitors for. Um, in terms of myself, I've, I've only joined Belmont. I um, started back in August, so I only had a few months before all this kind of happened. Yeah. Um, I've always always worked in hotels, always worked either operations or within the um, function. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and it is a, a beautiful property. I was lucky enough to to come down uh, when you had your open day last year. Yes, last uh, year. Right on on a day like today, it, it's stunning. It oh, really there's, is. Yeah. There's nowhere better to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, um, but we've seen lots of changes over the, the last you know, 10, 12 weeks now. COVID-19 and the lockdown has led to huge uh, adversity for so many in the sector. Um, how have uh, yourselves reacted to the lockdown from start and moving through? I think it was, It's. it's been, for me, it's been in, in four stages. Um, so, there was the the anticipation of will we have to close, which we had to, to deal with. There was a very sudden closure that we had to deal with. There was the closure, and now there's looking to reopen. So there's these stages that we're, where we've been working towards, we've been working very hard. Um, we, we have to follow the guidelines. I mean, these change every single day, sometimes every single hour. So it's a really fluid situation that we have to, you know, what we set in stone today will probably change by Monday. So we just have to, to roll with it and to make it as fluid as possible. But I think our priority has always been our people, our guests and our property. That, that's always been the function. And so whenever we look at anything now, we're looking at how do we protect our team, how do we protect the property and how do we protect the guests, um, especially now we're looking to reopen. Um, so it was sad to see the gates locked. I think in 35 years, there's never been a day when we've closed the gates of Le Manoir. Um, so it was a very difficult and emotional time for the team. Um, but I think we're now really looking at the positive spin at the, the reopening and, and what that will look like and reopening those gates and welcoming our team and our guests back. Brilliant. So I'll, I'll touch on the, the reopening or the plans for reopening in a mm -hmm. moment. But uh, the the, the team aspect is really important in hospitality, and we know that hospitality staff are used to being busy. They're used to being on their feet all day, you know, providing service or in the kitchen or whatever. Um, so yeah. furlough is a, a massive challenge. Um, what have you and your team been doing to engage with staff through this process? Um, quite a lot, really. I think it's been our main focus from day one is to keep, for me, it was more so let's keep the team involved. Let's keep the team informed of what's happening. Um, it was a really difficult time to see that the gates close and it almost happened within 24 hours that everybody left site. Um, so we didn't have much time to prepare them for, for what that what that looked like. Um, in terms of um, conversations, so we've had we have biweekly conversations with our managers just to kind of let them know. So most of them are, are on furlough as well with obviously the operation closed. Yep. Just to keep them up to date with what's happening, the guidelines, what, what changes are coming. We do a monthly call with our team, so everyone dials in, everyone gets an update of what that, that looks like. Um, we do what a lot of companies do, we do the bingo and quiz nights yeah. um, every week, which have been really popular, I have to say. It's really helped my Zoom digital skills, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've done um, what's called Manoir Meets. And Manoir Meets was a, a simple little idea we had right at the start to turn the managers, if you like, into people. And so we have a little bio of all the managers with a picture and what their plans are after lockdown, what they're going to miss the most, what their favourite part of Le Manoir is, just so that everyone gets to see individually who they are. And then we publish that each week. Um, we have a, our own little Facebook page for this now uh, where our community joins together. And we, we have an app that we use that we so um, it's linked to our payroll system. So everybody has access to that. And we just post really simple, short things. Um, we did a lot for the mental health awareness week. So just making yeah. sure that everyone knew what support was available and what, what was there. 
But I think the main thing that has really set us apart from what I think a few other people have done is we took the time, myself and my team, and the HR team, to individually call all 170 employees um, just after a couple of weeks, just to see how, how they are, what they're doing. Um, it was really good to hear, you know, some people have gone into learning, some people have are volunteering at the NHS, and they're, they're, they're just oh, yeah. really, I think it's really brought out um, some, some characters and some personalities that I think have, have worked really well. It's really brought the, the Mamar is a very special place in terms of it's all about the family element. And I think that community is, is just, uh, when you speak to them, they're really missing work. Um, I've worked in a few hotels, I know that wasn't the case, but I think here they really do miss that community element, that family, that the site. And like we said, especially this time of year to not be not be there. Um, and then we've looked at the training aspect because I think it's it's a great opportunity for people to start to upskill, to look at new skills. Um, so not only have they gone away and found their own courses, there's been lots available uh, for everybody. Um, we, we launched what we, we're calling OLA, and OLA is our online learning academy. And it's something that the, our team put together, not, not just for Le Memoir, but the, the Belmont global team, um, so for all hotels. And it's really a platform to go on to, centered around our core values, and you can find courses and articles to read and information and videos to really kind of keep the Belmont um, culture alive, but then also look at the, the bigger picture. For, for them just to, to dip in and out when they want to. So it's a really good platform that uh, that we're lucky to have. Very busy then. <laughs> Very busy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think it, it's hugely important. And you know, speaking to, to businesses all across the, the UK, making sure that your staff are, you know, are all right yeah. uh, is massively important. Uh, we know there's a lot of people in the sector who work in the sector, and the only socialising they have is with their work colleagues. So to take yeah. that away has been a, a big miss for a lot of people. Um, I like the fact that you've picked the phone up. Um, there's nothing more powerful than a phone call. You know, yes. Zoom, me Zoom people, meetings are great. Yeah, some people are just, yeah, I'm fine, thanks for calling. And some people really appreciate that. And it turned into kind of an hour and a half conversation, and you realise that you're potentially the only person they've spoken to. Um, yeah. In that period. So I think it's really nice to just have that personal touch because a lot was taken away quite quickly from them and it was a lot to process. So we gave them time to do that and then we took the time to, to speak to them. Um, and we're doing that now. We're starting now. We're looking at, at reopening. We have, we're calling them individually again to look at what that looks like for them because everybody is in a different situation and needs different support at different times. So, yeah. Do, do you have staff from no, Europe who have returned home? Or most of your staff. Have a few. I'd say there's only a handful that, that did return home. Um, we did. We were lucky enough. If you think about, we, we had a lot of placements and intern students from a lot of the hotel schools that had just re, really started because they were always the first quarter of the year. And unfortunately, they were all record uh, and their placements were, were cut short. So it was a real shame. They were really upset to leave us. And hopefully, we can welcome them back as soon as we can um, open up to the placements again. Um, but we, yeah, and I think that's the. The, the key question for them now is they really do want to return, but with the quarantine period and all these different questions, it is going to be tough for them. So we have to we have to just take that into account as well. Yeah, I think there's an awful mm -hmm. lot of learns to come from this. Definitely. Um, and, and as you said before, no, we, we will. Any plans that are put down may change. You know, yeah. Don't for that. Yeah. yeah. No worries. Yeah, so. Yeah. We've all got the 4th of July in our head as a magical date. Yes. Um, <laughs> and optimistic that businesses will be able to open their doors. Mm -hmm. um, what changes have, have yourselves implemented in readiness for uh, opening the doors to welcome staff and customers? I think for us, we're, I mean, it is out in the, the press now. We are hoping to open the doors and take off those awful padlocks from the gates on the 14th of July. So Bastille Day, which is a very important day to Raymond. Um, yes. so I think he's, he's very he's delighted that that will happen. Obviously, that's all subject to government guidelines. We're still yeah. waiting for that uh, that final announcement. But we, we needed a date to work towards, and we needed a date for the team. It couldn't just be constantly open-ended. And there's so much to do to prepare to open that by setting at least a date in advance, we could we, we all had something to work towards. And for us, we really want to protect, as I say, it's, it's the property, the people and the guests. So 
we have had a business, a core business team that have been working throughout just to keep the gardens going because this is obviously the probably the worst time of year to just yeah. walk away and leave them. Um, so we have an, a fantastic, uh, really small team of gardeners working to just do as much as they can to keep the property. And the maintenance team are starting to come back to really revitalise the property because it's been yeah. closed for so long. Um, in terms of the guests, we're really trying to enhance the experience that they already had. So we don't want to detract from the experience, but we want to make it as safe as, as possible for them. Um, and the same with our team, that there's, there's no way that we would open and put anybody, um, any single person at, at risk. And whilst we haven't got plans, you know, I can't really say there's our opening plan and our open, opening document at the minute. Every single department is thinking about what that looks like. And is that offering a little bit of remote working because a few of us have seen that it, it, it can be done? Um, is that, um, some people wanting to work part time now, some people working in different areas. And I think we're quite lucky that the future of Le Manoir lies in the, the heritage of the team, the heritage of the site and, and the fact that people really want to work there and really believe in what we're trying to do. So I think we're, we're starting to see the differences. I mean, the technicalities of face masks and temperature checking, that's something that we really have to work on and understand what, what that looks like. Um, and as I said, Le Manoir has always been about an experience. It's always been about that place to come and celebrate. And we don't want that to detract and we still want that to happen um, just in the safest way possible. So as soon as we have the announcement, we can, we can all work towards that date. But as I say, it changes every single day. <laughs> I, I like the idea of Bastille Day. Yeah, that's, it was, that's nice. <laughs> It's kind of, yeah. it, it's all tied in, it's all worked well. We're just really hoping that we can, but I think it's, you know, Raymond was delighted to look at, at Bastille Day as, as a kind of reopen and a, a celebration yeah. of, of um, everything that is Le Manoir. Very fitting, yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, so, we've, we've been in this now for, what, 10, 11 weeks. Um, Lost track positive of time, learnings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. What, what positive <laughs> learnings have you taken out of this? Um, I think globally we've realised that as a company we are very, um, you know, we've had the teams, albeit reduced teams, working remotely that have managed to accelerate a lot of the projects that we're already looking at. So, for example, the, the OLA, the, the, the training platform, was something that's been in discussion for a long time. And in a matter of days almost, it was created, it was launched, and so many teams were involved in that. So I think it was nice to see that working remotely, you could really still accelerate that project and get everybody on board and behind that to really deliver it. So I think that's something that we will definitely, you know, we've set the bar with that as a project that can be launched in a few days. So imagine what it'd be like if we had actual time to really plan it out and yeah. have everybody working on it. So it's something that we can continue. I think for, for me, I think when I've been speaking to the team, it's been a really interesting time for them to take this step back because like you said, hospitality is 100 miles an hour when you work in it. And very rarely have you had that chance to step back with your family, um, you know, and to really look at what is important in your life. And when you're speaking to the team, I think they're going to potentially come back with a new mindset and a new perception of why did they have to work at 100 miles an hour and, you know, what stopped them having that work life balance and the fact they've spent time with their children. And the fact they've spent time with their partners and, and not got divorced, um, <laughs> living in, yeah. you know, in this little bubble, they've got their garden done, they've got all these projects done, and you know they've they've realised that this was, and um, but then they've also, and this is what was so important for me, we have really tried to involve them, communicate to them, look after them, support them, so that they would come back. I mean, there's been so many horror stories that we, you know, the the, the people are the key, and for me, I've noticed that I've only been at the memoir a very short time, but I've noticed that. It is it is a family. It is a little community that every single person makes up the, you know, that that kind of beating heart of Le, Le Manoir. And I think with the right attitude and support, you can really see what what they can do. And I, I only want to continue that when we go forward and when we reopen just to keep that spirit alive. Um, and that attitude of I really miss work. I really want to come back. You know, it's something I'm going to remind them of in December. <laughs> I, know. Um, I, I haven't spoken to businesses across it. It's funny speaking to HR people and say, well, we've told them they might be coming back on X date. Yeah. And some folks saying, well, can I get the weekend off that week? That's, oh, yes. You know, yeah. They're used it's, to this. Yeah. You know, not I, working on Friday night. Yeah, I think it's really, it'll be interesting for people to come back because we were only just having a conversation this morning as a team that no workplace will be the same to go back to. 
for a long, long time, if it ever does. Um, there's going to be so it's going to be so stringent almost because of the guidelines that are in place for everybody's safety and everybody has to adhere to them to keep it as safe as possible that it will be a shock to have had all this time out and then come back to a different workplace. It's it, it is that's the kind of culture shock. Yeah. We've got to that's what we're trying to manage at the minute to try and make it as you know I don't want to scare people I don't want to shock people but I want to prepare them mentally that what what it is about to be. Yeah. Um, but yes, it, was, uh, it, it will be interesting, you know, question, is the canteen open? <laughs> uh, all these questions just don't come us. Um, but yes, we're, we're working towards it, so yes. Good. Well, it certainly sounds like there's, there's a lot happening that, that will set yourselves up to to get those padlocks off the gates. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a, certainly a, a long slog, and I think whenever the industry does come back, we know that it's going to be different. Uh, yeah. Certain rules and regulations will will make it different yeah. uh, for, for businesses and for, for the consumer. But uh, yeah. I, I think we, we do all want to get out. We all want to kind of get back into that that way yeah. of celebrating yeah. things or spending time with friends or, or family for a meal or for drinks. Yeah. Um, but I think we have to be realistic that it's going to be a, a bit of a slow burn. Yeah. And, and, and look, looking forward, um, what do you think are the next steps for the sector? You know, What should they be concentrating or focusing on? I think a big part is, 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 like we said, that we need to reintegrate our teams back into the new normal. We, one, we, we need to do it safely, but we need to do it in um, the most supportive way possible. And we're working on some training at the minute that we are going to deliver virtually to every employee before we reopen um, in terms of hygiene practices and hand washing, just to, just to remind them. Um, hopefully we'll have some videos because I think it's nice to see your your own site as to how it works and if we moved things or changed things we can talk them yeah. through it and that would be quite nice to see. Um, but I think it's every person is different and everyone's going to react to it in a very different way and you only have to walk to your local supermarket and see the difference in the people in the supermarket. Some people walk around as though it's absolutely fine, some people are absolutely terrified and we have to bear that in mind for the sector and I think it is going to take us a long time to recover because it's not people's, I, I don't believe it is people's um, perception of you as a company. It's their own fears, if you like, of, of yeah, what, think, what go and stay and yeah. do I need to go to Spain for my holiday? Or And I think it's going to take, I think people, for me, when, when we've been speaking to people, they've almost, everything is going to happen next year. That big family holiday is next year. That trip abroad yeah. is next year. So I think it's a good opportunity for the UK market to really capitalize and, and start to bounce back with, with that if they do it in the right way but you can only do that with your team around you you know yeah. and unless you unless you've integrated them back unless you've done that training and continue that training just because we're holding that one session doesn't mean that everyone's covered you know it's yeah. constantly reminding them constantly working with them um, and it'd be nice to see when we've been having the bingo nights and the quiz nights to get everybody from different departments talking, albeit virtually, you know, just enjoying it, asking questions, seeing each other's families on the screen. I think moving forward, if, if when we are can, well, can sit in a room and do a quiz at, at, on site at yeah. the end of a show for everybody, just so everyone just uh, to socialise and just understand. It is strange that this the distance that's between all of our colleagues now has yeah. weirdly brought us closer together. Uh, and, and, yeah. I think, yeah. and a yeah. hotel that there will be people who work at the hotel who aren't actually that familiar with someone in another department, but now they're all here on screen yeah. in the and same I think place, and that's great. What's quite nice is it's probably the first time ever that every single person is in the same boat. Everyone is in the same position. Nobody can see their family. Nobody can do X, Y, and Z. And there's a lot more tolerance. I've found to, to people there's a lot more people speaking even personally you, you go around my local village where I live and everyone says hello whereas before everyone was kind of on the phones they were too busy they were running around and now neighbours stop and have a conversation so I think for this period the world has slowed down I, I don't it's almost like a new year's resolution for me that it'll last a couple of months and then it will all go back again <laughs> but it's, hope. <laughs> it's, 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 it's what you it's what you kind of kind of make yeah. it but I think we We've always been a place, as I say, we've always been a place of, of of celebration, and we want that to be for our team, but we also want that to be for for our guests. And you know, when we open, we're hoping that moving forward, all of those celebrations that you never managed to have over these last 
few months, you you kind of have a really good celebration afterwards. Yeah. So that, uh, that's how no, I thought. Uh, no, I, I agree with you. I think we we all want to come out of this you know, safely. No, yeah. We, as, the, as a consumer, we we probably expect a little bit more, and, and hygiene and cleanliness are two things that we'll definitely be looking for. Yeah. But we don't want that to be at the forefront. We still want to go out and enjoy ourselves and celebrate those moments with friends or family. Yeah. I think it's seeing that a company has taken those steps, and I don't think any company is going to open the doors and get it right from day one, a hundred percent, because there's so much that we every day we're thinking about new things that we haven't thought of before. Yeah. Um, and it's only going to be as as we go through that the smaller, smaller, smaller details that we've completely not thought about can yeah. come to light. And it's just having that understanding that we every business will try as hard as possible because nobody will just open, or hope not will open and have none of these factors in place because it's it's not if it's not a safe place for your team then it's definitely not a safe place for your guests no. because the team is a priority. <laughs> oh, definitely, and it's, it sounds like you no, know, you and your team have. have done a great amount of work you know, keeping the team together, but mm. making sure that whenever you can welcome guests, it's going to be the right place for them to come and, yeah. and enjoy uh, yes. in the way that they did before. Um, yes. But listen, Sarah, I, th I really appreciate you, you know, sharing some of the insights of what's been going on down in uh, yeah, Great Milton. Yeah, you know, really appreciate it. Um, and I said, uh, we'll have this shared across our social channels in the, the coming days, I'm sure. Um, but I said, I, I will let you get back to your morning. Uh, <laughs> is that a busy day ahead? It's always a busy day. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, well, th thanks again. And uh, keep, keep an eye on our social channels for more catered.com catch-ups. Take care. See ya. Thank you.